I'm Liat of KnitFreedom.com and I'm going to show you how to mend a hole in your knitting. And this is a technique that I learned from a knitty editorial in 2006 by Kate Atherley, who in turn learned the method from Rena Crockett from Flawless Knit Repair. So this is a demonstration of that technique that's in knitty and it's definitely the best one that I've found. And here's how to do it. Alright, gets ready. This is a this is a couple of steps. So I've got here a little swatch where I actually just knitted and then cut right out of the middle and took out a few rows. And it's important to know how many rows came out. So you're going to want to clean up the knitting as best as you can. Obviously, if this is like the bottom of a sock, um, it's not going to be beautiful like this. It's going to have like all these worn out little pieces. So trim everything that you can and just clean up everything so that it looks like full knit stitches or nothing, right? Just short ends. You don't want like a bunch of crazy wiggly yarn in there. So clean it up as much as you can. And if, for instance, if you have something like this where it hasn't been cut, where like you might, you will probably find something like this, right? Especially if the, if the sock owner waited a while and continued to wear the socks before they asked you to repair them, um, you might find something like this. So you can take a crochet hook and re and just like recover these stitches right here and pull them back through so re-knit everything as much as you can that hasn't been cut or isn't like about to break because it's really like threadbare okay so i've just just used a crochet hook to pull those back so i've got four stitches on the top and four stitches on the bottom and let's see how many rows have come out right i'm sure there's a few ways to do this but this is how i like to do it um just look at the v's themselves all right Let's find some that line up. These down here definitely line up to me. Like this V is in the same row as that V, right? So is that one, and so is that one. Therefore, so is this one, and so is this one, right? So the ones that we're missing are, oops, and this one is about to come out. Oh, it's about to come out. Bad. Uh, it's on its way out. Oh, well, okay. So. We've just unraveled it a little bit wider. That is no problem. It's going to happen. This is very realistic. But let's just trim it like this so we don't have a lot in the way there. Okay, so this is in the same row. These are in the same row. Therefore, this is in the same row. And then we are missing, let's see, one, two, three rows. We're missing two rows. Just like that. We're just missing this row right here and this row right here and we actually have these two rows. So we're not missing very much. This is pretty much the smallest hole that I can show you on. Alright, so the first step is to take a tapestry needle and some thin yarn, like just some thread like this. And what we're going to do is weave in some stabilizing, some little stabilizing yarns so that we can get some structure here so that we're not just like laying everything on top and hoping it'll stay, right? Okay. So what you're going to want to do is starting from the bottom here, we're going to come in, here's the first stitch that we want to look at right there, okay? Come in from the stitch next to it, just like this, and come in from the back of this stitch like that, and pull the thin yarn through, and give yourself, give yourself enough here to weave through this whole thing like this. All right, next we're gonna come in through this stitch right here, the very corner, just like that. In, and then back out. Oops, there we go, straight out. There we go. Okay, we're gonna go back into the same stitch now. We need to go into each stitch twice. So back in here, and then out through the back of the stitch that's next to it. Like that. Okay, and then we're going to go back into this stitch right here and out through the back. All the way down the row. Just like that. And I suppose we can cut this end that we don't need over here because it keeps getting in the way. Okay, so you can see how this is really going to start to hold everything together nicely. Go into every stitch twice, coming into the front, 
and out through the back towards you like that okay into the front and out towards you from the back good we're almost done now okay so this this setup is going to help enormously when it comes time to do our next step it's going to be so much easier and i've tried to do it without this step it's not as fun <laughs> i thought i could invent a faster way okay almost done There we are, and back through, and then we can just go like this. Let's see, has everything gone through? Let's just go back up here one more time to make sure that every loose, that every loose stitch has been gone through, and we can go ahead and push that to the back so that you can't really see it. All right, so this is what it should look like before you start the next step. The next step in repairing the hole is to cut as many lengths of yarn as you have rows that are missing. So I only have two rows missing, right? So I'm gonna need two lengths of yarn and make sure that they are long. Like this one is that long. I just wanna have plenty of yarn so that I can weave in later. And I'm just using an opposite color, or an opposing color so that you can really see easily. So I've got two lengths like this. And let's take the first one and we're gonna use the stabilizing threads that we set up in the previous step to hold this in place. Now we're going to go over and under with this yarn, with this replacement repair yarn. Let's just start with under. We're going to go under two and over two. Like we can just imagine these as big stitches. So we're just going to go under one stitch and over one stitch like that. Just like that. And then pull it through. and just leave about an equal amount of yarn on both ends for weaving in. Okay, so now what we can do is take a crochet hook and re-knit one row using this yarn right here. Okay, just ignore just ignore the, uh, the purple yarn. We're gonna take it out in a minute, okay? So just reach in here with your crochet hook, just around the, uh, around the threads, just ignore them like that and grab the yarn that you just put through, that extra little piece, and pull it, and pull it up. So now we've got one stitch there, okay? Just hold that there, then we'll go to the next one. Reach in here, get that green loop, and pull it through. So let's pull some extra big loops so that they don't disappear on us, like that. Just pull plenty so they don't go anywhere. Okay? We can tighten that up in a bit. All right, we've got a couple more stitches to go. That. Okay, we've got three stitches pulled up nicely. Looking good. And I'm just trying to hook this any way possible. There's not really a whole lot of technique involved in this part. Just grab it and pull. Make sure that you don't twisting the, you don't want to be twisting the loops like that. You just want to have them nice and flat, just pull straight up like that. And I think, let's see, let's do, we may want to do one more here on the side. There we go. Okay. All right. Excellent. So we've got these five new stitches here like that. And now, we only have one row missing. So I'm gonna show you how to use the last length of thread to graft this row to that row. To graft these two rows together, we're gonna to want to look at the row that is still missing. That's gonna be the key to knowing where to start repairing this. All right, so looking at some of these rows that are still intact, I see that these two stitches are in the same row right here, this one and this one, and then this one is part of this row right here, right? And then this row is missing. So what we're gonna do is come in here from the side and just duplicate exactly where this row came from. It doesn't really matter, we can start even way over here. I'm just gonna weave this length of yarn that I have and copy exactly 
where the yarn in this row goes. Just go straight over it. Obviously, if you have yarn that's the same color, because you're trying to make your repair invisible, this is not going to be a problem. So see how I'm just following where the yarn went, and then that's where it broke. Okay, so we're going to come in here, and then we're going to come in right through the back, to the middle of this, out towards you. So now, when we're grafting these stitches, we have like a nice little anchor, right? We know that the yarn was came from over here, we just followed along its path, and then we're sort of continuing where it got worn out, or cut with scissors in my case. All right, and let's push this to the back so that it doesn't distract us. Okay. Like that. So take a good look at this. We're going to follow the path of the yarn. Now, the yarn needs to go through every stitch twice. So before we move on to getting this stitch, we need to go in here one more time. Straight in through the front, away from you, and then out through the middle towards you of the next stitch right here. And we can totally tighten up that stitch later, so don't worry if it's a little bit loose. Okay, now we're going to go back up and go a second time into the stitch up here, straight down in, and we can even follow this purple yarn, it's exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so now it's gone twice into this stitch right here, and once into this stitch, and only once into this stitch. So let's come back here and go down through, away, and then come back out through the middle towards you, through the next stitch to the left. Good. Just like that. All right, look back up again. We have a stitch that's only gone one piece of yarn, and we can just follow the path of this purple yarn like that. Now, we can't do that with the bottom row, with the green row, because there is no purple yarn through the green row. So, we've got to be paying attention for this row. This loop only has one piece of yarn through it, so we're going to go straight away, down towards you, sorry, down away from you, and then over to the stitch next to it, up through the middle and towards you. Good. See how this is starting to get sewn up and grafted together? So follow the purple yarn. And see why we, we want a really nice long tail? You do not want to be worrying about how much yarn you have on your tapestry needle right when you're like worrying about all this other stuff, right? So on the top row, I'm just following that purple yarn going into every stitch twice. On the bottom row, I'm also going into every stitch twice, but having to pay attention to where that is. Okay, make sure that these stitches don't twist right here, right? You don't want to go in the wrong way and end up with like a twist like that, because you're going to be able to tell later. So keep it nice and nice and flat, just like that. Just like the rest of these stitches, right? Nice and open. Always coming towards you, like that. Good, we're getting there now. Okay, almost there. We've got one last stitch. Make sure we come through in a way that leaves it nice and open and doesn't twist it. Okay, make sure that we go, let's see, this stitch right here needs another piece of yarn and look, there it is right there. There's the this is the yarn that we're trying to sort of continue. So go in right where it is, come through here. There we go. And now we can just follow the path of the yarn. It comes down here, but it, we need to make sure that we go into whatever stitch it is, we have to make sure we go in twice. There it is. Okay. We don't want like a lonely end there. So come back in here and let's see. I think something that will help would be to push this little lonely end out of the way, right? Just pull it to the back so it comes out of the way. Maybe same with this one down here. There. Just to pull it to the back so we can really see exactly what's left. And then, where else do we need to go after this? Well, I can't really tell, so let's just start where we can see where everything is where everything is all lined up, right? These two are lined up, 
right there, they're in the same row. Therefore, this yarn that we're working on right now is in the same row as this column right here. So as this as a stitch right here. So I think we need to follow this yarn right here, which means it comes back up through the stitch. See that? This is the yarn that we want to sort of get in sync with. So it comes up right through here. There's the stitch right there. And then you can even come around here and follow it just for a few more stitches because remember like it's got like a, a quarter of an inch of tail sticking out through the back so that's not gonna hold it's gonna keep unraveling so let's you could just go a little bit further like that look at that okay so and then we can do the same thing down here with this yarn we can thread it on the tapestry needle and follow the yarn and here we can start to get we can start to remove this yarn if it's in the way right okay so where should this one go we can look at the bottom these two rows look like they're in the same these two stitches look like they're in the same row these two stitches are in the same row which means that my green stitch my first green stitch right here is in the same row as this stitch right here. So if I want to continue this, I need to follow the yarn and the path of the yarn of this stitch, which goes in here. So I'm going to just follow it, copy it. So this is a this is a really important step to actually like securing the ends all the way so that it doesn't keep unraveling. Just follow the path of that yarn. You can do it as much as you want. There we go. Just at least at like a stitch and a half. There we go. Okay, let's make sure we, oh, we need to do it on the other side too. Let's do this. Let's take out, let's take out the purple yarn. If you want, you can just snip it carefully so that it's not in the way when we're trying to just do the finishing touches here. Obviously, the more you snip it, the easier it's going to be to to pull it out. Okay. See how short these ends are? That's why these are these are the two rows that we're missing. Here they are on the other side. That's why we want to make sure to go past them a few stitches, and then we're going to weave in these ends really well. Okay. So over here, maybe let's get this end out of the way we'll just get it to the, it looks like we started we started nicely so let's just get it out of the way to the back and finish that just follow that yarn around to the back and push it through there we go okay so that one's done so we have one more that we kind of just need to clean up here and here's the yarn right there I'm going to thread it onto my tapestry needle from the back because it matters where we push it through to the front. So I'm not going to push it through to the front quite yet until I know exactly where to go. All right, so let's look at the front. And let's see this. Which stitch does it line up with? There we go, that one. Those two are in one line and these two are in one line. So let us... And here's where the yarn is attached right there. So let's come out right at the bottom of the next stitch. Right there. And actually we want we might want to come out right in front of the yarn so this looks sort of all even. Good. Now we'll just follow this yarn around. We'll sort of trace its steps like that. The stitch right there. This is our little loose yarn, that's why the stitch is getting all big. Okay. Come back over, just trace where the yarn goes. And maybe one more time. And down, and then we can just push it through the back. Okay, and you guys can do a better job coming exactly over the other, the old stitches but I think that's that's good enough. So there is our mending job. Looks good, doesn't it? You can do the same thing. Just follow the steps. 
take it slow and just take a notice of where you are in each row and duplicate the, um, the path of the yarn in each row. For more awesome videos like this that are clear, slow, thorough, and close up, go to knitfreedom.com, sign up in the sidebar for the exclusive newsletter list where you get one brief video knitting tip in your inbox every week and discounts on all of the video classes that I sell and access to all of the free videos and all the free patterns and all the free knitting goodies on knitfreedom.com. So click the description in the box below, right there, go to knitfreedom.com, click that link and come say hi to me, watch tons of tips, do it now, it's going to be great.